What's up, Duelist? Your boy is back, and I've got all six of my tournament replays from yesterday's PS5 tournament. I'm going to be going over them with post-commentary. Huge shout-out to Forrest Ent, uh, youtube.com forward slash at Forrest Ent, um, for uploading and posting all these videos. Go check him out and subscribe to him. He does a bunch of other Edison content as well, so yeah, check him out. Really cool dude. All right, into the replays, into the replays. We got to do this quick because there are six of them, and they're live matches so they're a little bit they're a little bit slower than usual you know what i mean so we'll, we'll switch on that 2x we're gonna go ahead and get right into things the first game i'm playing up against tristan uh round one you can see your boy i'm looking thin bro camera angle doing me no favors god damn god damn no i'm just playing i'm just playing anyway my opening hand is all right i've got a bunch of fairy cards you know the vibes we'll get into it here in a second i open up with mirror force i open up with sangin i believe I think this is a game where I open up with saying No, I open up with Trigodia. Yeah, so I have Trigodia. I lost the die roll, so I'm going second here, I think. You know, what's happening? Why is this taking so long to get started? I'm going to skip forward. No, I won, the, I won the die roll. I get to go first. So, yeah. Yeah, I guess we start here now? Two minutes in? Okay, yeah. I draw for turn. I find Herald of Orange. I got Shining Angel. I just set it and pass. I kind of want to get my uh, maximum value trag, so I'm not going to set any of my back row yet. Here comes Card Trooper. Card Trooper Mill 3. Card Trooper attacking to the set, a classic move. Shining Angel is going to activate. I'm going to go get a DD Warrior Lady, basically. Uh, I just need to get something in the Banish Zone for my DLX, for my return, for all that stuff. So yeah, I get the DD Warrior Lady. Uh, I passes the turn after setting a back row. We draw for turn. It's Torrential Tribute, so I'm like, okay, cool. I'll just attack. Banish. Do I banish? I might not have banished here. I think I banished here. I thought I was playing against Vayu Turbo, and I didn't want to give them a draw. Because so far I've seen from the mills is Caius, Raiko, and Bottomless. So, yeah, that's pretty much what happens. So I do banish. I don't want to give them a draw towards, like, Dark Arm, Brain Control, that sort of thing. And then here I can just set Torrential Tribute um, if I want to. Or I could set Call of the Haunted if I want to. I think I set the call because I want to call Shining Angel and get my get my uh, Trigodi alive. So here Tristan attacks. We call back the Shining Angel. Uh, replay occurs. Tristan decides to attack. We take 200. Shining Angel's going to activate, and I forgot to activate my Trag before picking up my deck, and I was like, darn. <laughs> so first first few turns of the game, I've already messed up. Uh, I've misplayed. I'm like, I just woke up. I just drove in from Las Vegas. I hardly slept the night before. It was an hour drive to get to the tournament, and I'm like, okay, I need to stop messing up. I've already picked up my deck. I don't get to activate Trag at this point because I've already activated the Shining Angel, and it's resolved. I've missed the window to activate my Trag, whatever. But I just grabbed DL, and I'm like, this is fine. I can always activate Trag later. It's not a big deal. Um, it's not like I'm in a serious position. Now that I see that there's an Air Bellum in play, I know I'm playing against Rescue Cat, and I have a pretty good hand for facing Rescue Cat because I have a live Herald. So, like, even though I messed up, I'm feeling okay about it. I'm going to go ahead and just draw for turn, and I pick up Space Typhoon. So I can space the back row pretty safely i don't see what it is it's a little bit off camera it's another bottomless so not the best hit because my deck completely blanks bottomless so there's that but dialk is good here dialk can um run over the alchemist and it floats into another dd warrior lady and i flip another dialk which is really good because that means if my dialk dies i just get another one and then i keep it going basically uh attack over the arabellum for 200 points of damage set back row pass Opponent draws return. I think it's a D prison. Goes to read my D Alks. My D Alks are German. I should probably start using the English ones because everyone is, you know, whatever. So here I go to uh, pull up a translation on my phone, which, as you can see, I'm going to skip ahead a bit. Yeah, I pull up a translation on the phone so that Tristan can read the card and see what's up. Uh, yeah, I forget what I said in the background. Oh, I said Torrential. Yeah, Torrential plus D Alk. That's what you want set here. Keeps the hand high for Trigodia. Uh, even if the Dialk gets attacked, we'll add a card back to our hand. We'll still have a 3,000 Trigodi on our turn. But here comes a T-Set, and I'm like, okay, Rescue Cat T-Set could be a Hamster, could be a Spy, could be a Raikou. That's usually what it is. It could also be a Sangin. They do play Sangin. So there's four options. And I'm like, well, I have Torrential, worst case scenario, so I'm just going to attack it. Like, worst case scenario, I can always just Torrential. But there's a Deep Prison on my Dialk, and I'm like, actually pretty happy with that. Um, even though I do lose my Dialk, it means that my board is free, but it doesn't look like my board is... Like, it doesn't look like... Like, it looks like I'm more vulnerable than I am. Because I haven't been playing too many cards the whole game. Um, obviously, Torrential is represented here.
But if my opponent does something like flip spy, I can torrential there and I can get my one for one on a plus one. So it's it's a pretty nice situation where I won't have to actually herald the sp uh, a spy or a hamster that I've attacked into. So yeah, I just passed the turn. I've got torrential down. I feel pretty safe. Here comes a charge of light brigade off the top for Tristan. And this is where it reveals what I'm actually playing against. A monk gets milled and a machina force gets milled. So it, it gets revealed that the that my opponent is playing Machina Monsters as well as the Rescue Cat Monsters. So now I'm like, okay, I know exactly what's in your deck at this point. And here comes Lila. And this is huge for me because I'm like, okay, if they summon the Lila and their set monster isn't that one Sangin, I can Torrential, I can get my two for one, and I can just be up for the rest of the game at this point. There's no Machina Fortress in the graveyard. There's no Avarice coming. So here comes Lila. I go ahead and chain Torrential to the priority activate. And you can see the set monster there was a Nimble Mega Hamster. So being able to clear a hamster and a Lila and stop the mills towards a fortress for just one card with my deck is is so good. <laughs> it's so lucky. Um, yeah, it should have been a little bit of a tell that I didn't summon another monster with a handful of cards um, while I have one back row. It should have been a little bit of a tell that I was a torrential, but I think that they were okay with playing into it uh, just because they have extension here into the Machina Fortress. So they're going to pitch a force from hand to summon Fortress. So they're going to go minus one again. So I get two plus ones there, two really solid plus ones. And then here I'm able to drop the Trag finally, getting it into play. I take a good amount of damage. I dropped to 5,300, um, but like I'm still chilling. You know, I got my boys out here. I think I drew a Smashing Ground. So I'm like, oh, I got a Smashing Ground. I can just clear this. Um, I could also crash a bunch and get a DD Warrior Lady, but that'll have me taking 1,900 and I could potentially die to a Brain Control or a Mind Control. So I think I'm just going to smash and ground, honestly, uh, because I have Mirror Force. So my game plan here is going to be Summon Shining Angel, uh, smashing the Fortress, hit for 32, pass the turn after setting Mirror Force, and then the next turn I summon another monster after Mirror Forcing their attacks and uh, win the game. I also have Herald of Orange to make sure things don't go too south. So like, I've got two pieces of interaction here. <clears throat> the only thing I'm really losing to at this point is like a Brain Control Reversal. So I need to make sure my life total doesn't get too low. So even though it's tempting to go for uh, Shining Angel Crash, get DD Warrior Lady Crash, and save my Smashing Ground, the Smashing Ground is actually better to remove the Machina Fortress positionally here. I, I know like putting it in the graveyard is worse, but the life point swing is much more important at this position in the game because if I'm thinking a couple turns ahead, if I set the Mirror Force, then uh, if they do come back, they can, they're going to run into the Mirror Force and then I'm going to be able to attack for game basically. So that's my game plan. My track is only 1200 here, so anything can attack over it. So it's kind of like baiting them to play into the Mirror Force or overcommit into the Mirror Force. But they just set a monster and pass, and I'm like, okay, that's interesting. I draw Card Trooper, I believe. Is that the card I drew? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I drew Card Trooper. Yeah, there's the Card Trooper. I mill three. I mill a couple of D Prisons, Herald of Orange, give away some information about my deck, which is not always the best, but I think at this point um it's fine i attack with the card trooper to take the least amount of damage because once again like i don't the only way i'm losing this game is brain control reversal so i just want to take as little damage as possible uh, i'm gonna pop the track the track is only 1200 so they are gonna mill three they milled cat another fortress telling me a little bit more about the deck i'm able to get him for 14 they dropped to 21 this turn they drop for turn and next turn i have game so here comes Summon Gear Frame, and I'm just going to Herald of Orange that just so I can attack for game. I don't want them to, like, have a guy and me be forced to Mirror Force the Gear Frame, and then Main Phase 2, they Summon Fortress. I don't want to deal with that. I'm just going to use Herald of Orange, negate that, and that's going to be game one. And we're going to go to the next game after siding. So in sideboarding, I don't really remember what I sided, but I guess it'll come up, you know. Against these Ryko decks, I sometimes side in Breaker. I actually almost always just side in Breaker, except against Frogs, because it's like the best card in every matchup except frogs my opening hand is okay i have a smashing ground they were like the smashing grounds were really annoying um for me the whole tournament against set monsters they didn't really do anything that's something that like kind of comes up a lot i just set one and pass i think i might have a track i'm not really sure i don't remember what's in my hand i might have even had a torrential there uh but i have a smashing and nobleman so here comes flip hamster this game i get destroyed yeah i remember this game i get destroyed so here comes flip hamster i said a dust tornado that's what i said I remember it now because um, I thought it would be a set Raikou and I'm like it's a 50 50 if it's a hamster or a Raikou but they could also have Lila and Lila pop my back row uh, and I can chain the dust and that's really nice I basically just didn't want to lose advantage lose too much advantage to a set Raikou here um, either way I had a herald in hand I should have probably heralded the hamster I think that that was my biggest mistake because I figured okay they have one Raikou they're not going to have another one 
but they actually end up having a second Raikou here, and it's just like, I lose too many cards, basically, this game. Attacks for 11. We're going to skip forward a bit. Sets another Raikou. Skip forward a bit. On my turn, I summon Warrior Lady. I try to attack the new set in case it's like, I don't even know. I basically, I have Dialx in hand. And so I'm attacking the new set because if it's a Raikou, they'll target the Warrior Lady and I can just banish both. And then on their turn, they'll flip the other Raikou, hit my back row, and then I'll chain it. But they're looking at their back row, which tells me that it's Book of Moon. Basically, the way that Tristan is looking at their back row, they tell me it's Book of Moon. Because they're considering booking the Warrior Lady and then flipping the Raikou and popping it. But then they're realizing there's no difference in just like letting the Raikou pop the Warrior Lady now. So yeah, that's what they were thinking about. Oh, it's not a Raikou. It ends up being an Airbellum. And then I'm like, okay, because it's an Airbellum and my game plan was to banish this anyway, I'm just going to banish the Airbellum. It was interesting that they didn't summon the Airbellum uh, to play around like Mirror Force or something. But honestly, because I didn't have Torrential, they should have just summoned the Airbellum and forced my back row. It's very unlikely that it's Mirror Force. And even if it is Mirror Force, it's like trading one for one your Airbellum with the Mirror Force because the hamster already replaced itself by getting a Raikou. I passed the turn. Um, plus, they also had Book of Moon. They could have just booked their hamster in response to the Mirror Force as well. Uh, now that I've learned that they have Book of Moon. They were, they were thinking about booking the DD Warrior Lady and preserving the Airbellum. But then they would have had to do more to get over the... Warrior Lady plus the back row because they only have one spot removal in the Raikou. So here they just attack for 11. I take another 11, and this is bad because against Machina decks, you just don't want your life total to drop below a certain point because they can deal like 5,000 out of nowhere. And I've already dropped to that 5,000-ish range. And so I'm like, okay, I just got to do something this turn. I'm going to dust, and then they chain the book, and I'm like, I just needed to do that, you know? I can maybe herald the hamster when it flips again, but I'm just down so many cards. I go Card Trooper, attack the Raikou. Raikou's going to pop the Card Trooper. I'm going to draw a card. Card Trooper Mill was terrible. Uh, I draw into... I don't remember what I draw into. Oh, Solemn Judgment. And I'm like, Solemn Judgment is okay, but if I Solemn this hamster, I die to, like, gear frame. So I just have to not Solemn it. I set the Solemn, which is probably a mistake if I'm not going to use it, but I need it set because if they have gear frame, I lose anyway. So basically, Solemn is like, I'm going to Solemn a gear frame, and I'm not going to Solemn anything else. Uh, or I guess a summoner monk. The glare's a little bad here, but they're getting another Raikou. Uh, yeah, I think at some point in the future, say set a card. It's a pot of avarice. I nobleman it. I summon DD Warrior Lady. I attack over the hamster. Um, yeah, here comes Raikou targeting the back row. That's gonna blow it up. Mills three hits another avarice. They have so many cards. They have six cards in my five, and they have an avarice now, so they're going up to seven cards, which is just like insane. And my five cards are, like, bad. Like, I have a Smashing Ground, which doesn't do anything. I have to Herald the Gear Frame here, basically, um, to survive. And then they just have the Fortress Natty anyway, and then they have another Fortress as well. I'm skipping forward a little bit because it's, like, it's moving a little slow for your boy. And we've got six matches to get through, plus a Game 3 already from this. Here comes the Smashing Ground. And like I said, like, the Smashing Grounds, they were, like, really good when I was winning. But when I was losing and I was behind on life... I would get attacked by the monsters and then like then I'd smashing. So I'd already lose the value of my life total or whatever monster I have in play. And you can see my last card in hand is Christy, and I just I think I had three fairies or something like that. Or five. I was just off the amount of fairies I needed this game. I might have even had less. I might have even only had two fairies. But yeah, I'm just waiting for them to put lethal into play. Here comes Heavy Storm. Uh oh, they not Heavy Storm. They're not playing the Heavy Storm. <clears throat> they normal summon the rescue cat. Uh they thought it was Summoner Monk little bit of on-camera jitters, pitch to spell, but yeah, that's not how that card works. They're going to activate Rescue Cat. And here I'm just making sure that they have another two targets. Because if they don't have two targets, I survive this turn. But if they do have any, if they do have two targets, I lose this turn. Here comes the Airbellum, and here comes the Raikou, and then I lose, basically. Which sucks, but such is life. Okay, so I Legacy, and yeah, find nothing. So attack. And that was another instance of Legacy being bad. Because like when you're behind, Legacy is so slow. Anyway, moving on to game three. I was like, okay, maybe I'm just going to side out the Legacy. I don't think I sided out the Legacy because it's good going first when you have the initiative versus Raikou. But I did side out some of the Smashing Grounds, and I brought in like some of the Breakers and stuff. And I also brought in some of the Pulling the Rugs going first. I didn't have them going second because uh, it only hits four cards in their deck. But then I remember they have Caius, so it hits at least five cards in their deck. It's going to hit three Gear Frame, Summoner Monk, and at least one Caius. I'm not sure how many Caius they play, but they play at least one. And there's a very low chance that they... They didn't leave in the Caius's, so like, I just switched some stuff around. Uh, going first, going second, you want to side a little differently in general. Some cards are worse, some cards are better. 
I don't know if this is like even making sense, but yeah, this is taking forever. I gotta skip forward. All right, I'm going first. I open up Sangin. I open up a few other cards. As you can see here, my hand has Typhoon. It has Rota for DD Warrior Lady. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna Rota for Warrior Lady. And I'm gonna set Sangin. And they're never gonna see it coming. They're never gonna see it coming. They might set a Raiko in response to my Sangin. That's basically what I was hoping for here. So yeah, I set my Sangin. I set my back row. Here they normal summon Lila and they target my back row. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> It was Space Typhoon. So what I was trying to get out of this engagement was <clears throat> them to set a Raikou or a Hamster and a back row. And then both my Sangin and my Typhoon are safe. Like if they Raikou pop my Sangin or my Typhoon, then I get my plus one basically. Uh, they just set a back row and they mill three and they find nothing. But they do mill two monsters, a Gear Frame and a Rescue Cat. And Rescue Cat is scary because of potential Call of the Haunted basically. So yeah, here I have Breaker. Breaker's just going to blow up the Mirror Force, and that's just what Breaker does. Breaker's insane. It's like such a good card here. And then here I'm like, I'm going to start pressing my advantage. I'm just going to flip Sangin. I have Herald for Gores. I'm going to attack for 16. Uh, I'm going to set my bottomless. And next turn, I'm just going to like take over this game, basically, life total wise. Here they draw for turn. They have my body as a shield. They have a few other cards in hand. They have a Caius. They have a Brain Control, I believe. They set a back row, and then they pass. I, if I'm seeing this correctly, they have brain control, they have Caius. They could have brain controlled one of my monsters and sacked it for that Caius. Um, we would have had bottomless... They would have been able to chain my body as a shield. Um, one thing we could have done was actually Herald of Orange Light the Caius, chains my body as a shield, and then we can chain bottomless. That could have been something uh, that we did in order to play around my body as a shield. Um, but yeah, here we just attack for 26. They elected not to brain Caius. I feel like they definitely should have because they had the, my body as a shield to force it through. It would have been costly life total wise from them though, but it would have been worth it just to like break up this pressure and not take this 26. So I think that they should have just gone for it because here taking this 26 is really bad. They dropped to 3,800. I'm at 8,000 still. Um, here they go special summon cyber dragon and I'm like, okay, or no, I go bottomless. I go bottomless because I know Caius is potentially happening, and I don't want to lose my Breaker for free, basically. I want to force them to have something that's stronger than Breaker that doesn't lose to Herald of Orange. Here they chain my body as a shield, defends the Cyber Dragon, they take 1,500. So they drop down to 2,300, and then they sack for Caius, and I have Herald of Orange. And this is why Herald of Orange is so broken, because it's usually a 2 for 2 on Caius, but it also took a whole turn out of them. It took their normal summon as well. So yeah, just Herald of Orange. Getting the Cyber Dragon and the Caius, one of the best exchanges of Herald of Orange imaginable. My opponent paid 1,500 life points to protect a monster that's no longer in play. They're forced to brain control at this point, and I'm like, damn, they could have brain Caius me at some point. Uh, I attack over, they attack over the Sangin. Sangin's gonna search. We're gonna take 600, and I'm just gonna grab another Lethal Threat, I believe, or I'm gonna grab Grammo. I don't remember. Oh no, I grab, I grab Card Trooper because Card Trooper is a card I can summon under Bottomless that attacks for game. So if if they're able to clear my my breaker somehow, I can just summon card trooper and then attack them for game. If they have a deep prison, I have two lethal threats because they're now at 1500 after the brain control. Yeah, that's the game plan. Yeah. So card trooper, activate, mill three, and then tack, tack. And that's going to be that. GG's to Tristan. Absolutely owned me in game two, but game three, I think a little bit trigger shy on the brain control Kaya situation that I think they, they didn't realize how quickly Sangin plus Breaker can put them at a dangerous life total for the rest of the game. And they like thought, oh, I can take another hit from this. But in all honesty, like taking 2600 is something that even though those cards are like, like the Breaker already got its value and it feels bad to spend a brain control on it. Like you want to save it for like Christia or something. Um, like that's why, that's why Breaker's so good. People are like, they don't want to spend removal on it after it already got the plus one basically. And so I definitely think that they should have... Um, should have used the thing. All right, next match. So I go 1-0, and then the next match is me playing against Tommy Dang, resident fairy player. This one's kind of long, so we just gotta we gotta hop into things. Let's go ahead and skip forward. I win the die roll, I believe. I just start off with set back row pass. Um, he starts off with. So the difference in our lists. I don't know if I covered my. I covered my list yesterday. You can check out my list. The difference in our list is I have less Christia, and I know his list. So my game plan is to just rush him down, and. Make it so his Christia, like on the turn that he, he does stick Christia, because he's more likely to stick it, I either have Herald of Orange, Deep Prison, Bottomless, or Smashing Ground. So even though his Christia is going to put him over the top in the late game, 
um, I want to put him at a life point deficit so that when I um, when I do get that position, when he does land his Christias, <clears throat> which he's going to do, his deck is built more to land Christias than mine is, I have like six or seven removal spells that can just get it out of the way and I can get the last few points of damage in. So that's my game plan, basically. Uh, this game, I just draw pass again. He draws, he flips Legacy, he draws again. Uh, he activates Heavy Storm, and I chain Dust Shoot. So one thing about Fairy Mirrors is you actually want to save your Dust Shoot because, um, yeah, they play Legacy of Yadagrasu. You don't really need to Dust Shoot them right away. They're going to play pretty slowly. Uh, they usually have low back row if they're playing Tommy's sort of list that don't draw them more cards. Uh, you want to wait for that key moment where you're going to be able to take a Christia or you're going to be able to take a Herald. And so me waiting on this dust shoot here got me a solid plus one. I was able to take his uh, thing from Heavy Storm. Unfortunately, the Glarus here is gonna it's gonna block his hand, but he's got Cyber Valley. He's got Honest, and I'm just gonna take the Cyber Valley. And you'll see his trap cards here. He's got Compulsory, Bottomless, and Legacy. So that's just what I need to play around for the rest of the game. Compulsory is pretty bad against fairies. He's gonna flip both monsters. He's gonna attack for 11, and then he's gonna attack for 15. And I'm gonna drop Gores. So basically, what I was trying to get him to do was attack me directly. I would activate dust shoot on the attack, take his Herald, and then drop Gores. Uh, this worked out even better because he her he heavy storm. So not only did I get to take the Cyber Valley from his hand, but I also got his heavy storm out of his deck. So now I can just set all of my back row as freely as possible. And there's basically nothing he can do about it besides like one Typhoon. I pull out the bounty token. I've got my Gores in play here. He's got Honest DD Warrior Lady, which is pretty good. And he's got Compulsory, which is pretty good. Uh, he likes to only set two back row and pass. If I was him, I would have set all three because two of them are chainable. So there's really no reason not to set all three. He's probably saving the bottom list, but there's really no reason not no reason to. I figured the one he actually saved in hand was not the bottomless. I think it's the compulsory. I think his set cards are bottomless legacy. He should have set the compulsory to clear the token. So here I'm like, okay, if he has the bottomless, me summoning Freed here <clears throat> is going to trade with the bottomless, and then all my alchemists are going to be live. And it's good that I'm summoning Freed here and... Uh, getting value out of it, getting a one for one out of it, because freed normally with no lights and grave as I am right now and a low light count that's happening, and in a matchup where I'm going to be DD Warrior Lady spamming, it's going to be dead for the majority of this game. He only plays one monster that's bigger than freed, and that's Christia. And if he has Christia in play, I'm already losing. So, yeah, if I can trade this with a bottomless, which I do, I'm very happy about this because it means like future DD Warrior Ladies are not going to run into that bottomless. And I'm like, okay, so his last back row is probably just the legacy. So I'm going to attack with my token. And then he's going to potentially legacy. He might use his honest. He uses his honest. And I'm like, I don't really want to take the damage. I've already taken 2,600. Once again, that's a lot of damage. I'm just going to herald this honest and then trade the token for the DD warrior lady. So um, yeah, I decide to herald this honest. I just want to get my value. Uh, I do go minus one to do that. But um, the gores gave me the token for free anyway. And so I'm going to attack for 27 here, and he's going to Legacy, try to draw into his own Gores, and he just doesn't have it. So he takes 27, so he takes a good amount of damage there. And here I set my two back row. I can set two freely because his Heavy Storm is gone. So basically, yeah, that's it. He sets the back row passes. We draw Mirror Force, another great back row. I'm going to Normal Summon Alchemist. This plays into any of the Sweepers. Once again, now that my Freed is banished, uh, Alchemist can just get me back whatever I need. I'm going to activate it. I flip over Grand Mole, and I'm like, that's amazing. Because if my Alchemist ever dies... Um, I can get back Grand Mole, which is like the best card in my deck, basically. So Compulsory is going to activate, put my Gores back. And now that I have Heavy Back Row, that Gores is never coming down ever again. But the fact that it exists there means that he has to play through all my Back Row and more to beat me, um, which is probably fine. He's going to Mind Control my Alchemist here, which does suck. He's going to Synchro into Bryonic, pass Priority, and we are going to get Bottomless on that. I know he doesn't play Return in the main deck, so that's why I was okay with Bottomlessing this instead of saving, uh, and instead of Mirror Forcing it, basically. If I was playing against an unknown fairy player who absolutely would have returned in their main deck, I would not have bottomless the Bionic. I would have returned it or mirror forced it just to um just to keep it in the graveyard and keep it harder to access, basically. Uh yeah. Sets sets monster passes a turn. I draw a go. I'm just playing a bunch of draw go here. Summons the Herald, flips the Nova, synchros into Goyo Guardian to put themselves up to four fairies. So here I actually have a second bottomless and a mirror force, and I'm like. I should not bottomless this Goyo because they're at four fairies now, or he's at four fairies now. And if because he's at four fairies, the better removal spell to use here is Mirror Force. I know a lot of people will be thinking, oh, what if he doesn't attack? I'm like, okay, if he doesn't attack, that's fine. Like, that's chill. Then we can just wait, right? But I need to save my bottomless in case 
he um in case he has a Christia because Christia is now live and my game plan is to make sure Christia gets banished. So here comes 28. So I use the mirror force. Um, he does have Christia as a last card. Special summons it. Uh, I ask for the target. He's going to target Nova. I'm going to chain bottomless. So I have the second bottomless for the Christia. And now he has Nova Summoner and I'm up, I'm up solidly like four cards to one, which is really nice. I've got Sangin. I've got Gores. I can do a whole bunch of stuff. He can't really attack me. I check the life total. I just hit for a thousand past the turn. Here comes Nova Summoner attack the Sangin. Sangin's going to search DD Warrior Lady. I just want to banish his monster, keep him off four fairies. Um, and then I'm always representing Gores. So here comes set back row past the turn. We draw for turn. It's going to be another dude. I have Heavy Storm. It's going to trade with Space Typhoon. I summon the Warrior Lady. I think about this a lot. I have Herald of Orange. I could Warrior Lady and then Herald of Orange the Nova. But that puts him at four fairies. And I don't want him to be at Christia. So I just banish both. Um, and pass. I still have the scores, so I'm big chilling. Set back row. I draw an alchemist. Best card to swing into no back or best card to swing into back row is alchemist. Hit for 18. Here comes a card. Uh, checks graveyard. Just normal summons alchemist. Doesn't activate the effect. Attacks to crash. And now I have a couple of options here. I could herald of orange light the dimensional alchemist, but the reason I can't do that is because I want to activate my dimensional alchemist. If I activate my Dimensional Alchemist, it'll be Chain Link 2, and it'll actually Chain Block his Dimensional Alchemist. So if I Herald of Orange's Dimensional Alchemist, it's like a 3 for 1, which is really bad, and it loses me all of my card advantage. I'm just going to let him get the Christia back, and then I'm going to Herald of Orange's Christia. And he's at 900, so I'm just going to add back Mole, and I'm going to Summon Mole, and I'm going to attack him for game. So that's pretty much what's going to happen here. I know you can't see it because of the glare, but that's just life. So yeah, I'm just going to add back Mole. And my game plan was initiated. Like, keep the Christia off the board just enough and shove enough damage to that I can just attack him for game like this. And yeah, we're going to game two. So very close game, a lot of, like, back and forth. Once again, my deck is more aggressive than his. I have more copies of DD Warrior Lady to force through the recruiters. I have more spot removal spells, but I have less Christias. So the late game is definitely going to favor him, and the early game is definitely going to favor me. If I can get that advantage in the early game, that life advantage, then I can basically win the match. We're going to skip forward. Uh, yeah. Oh, shit. Too far. Too far. He gets to go first. He starts off with T-Set. And I, I grossly overestimated this deck's ability to deal with set monsters without Grand Mole. Um, yeah. I just set four. And then I wrote a to play around Dust Shoot. I go grab Warrior Lady. Summon Warrior Lady. Attack the set. Banish it. Um, but yeah, my hand is not... It's not amazing. I think I have Solemn, Deep Prison, Dust Shoot, and Legacy of Yada. I look at his hand, he has two Christias, a Soul Release, a Mind Control, and a Mind Crush, which is a card Tommy really likes, and it makes me happy that all of my cards are set because it's less things that he can Mind Crush accurately. I'm going to summon Alchemist, activate the effect, banish Torrential, and I'm like, damn, now he knows I don't have Torrential, but it's okay because I have a Warrior Lady Banish, so if this Alchemist leaves, then I'm big chilling. That being said, attacking a set monster is like something I have to do. I have a smashing ground in hand. I'm going to banish the Sangin, attack the Shining Angel. Let's see what he floats into. He's going to float into Cyber Valley. I don't think I have a smashing ground in hand, actually. I think I have Solemn Judgment. So I save the Solemn for the mind control here, basically. I pass the turn. This Cyber Valley is crazy. It's a card I missed the whole day. I wish I would have played it. I'm going to Solemn Judgment. Um, I just couldn't find space for it in my list. He switches the Cyber Valley to defense. Smart play. A lot of people would forget to do that. Attack the Cyber Valley. Banishes. Draws card. And he's just like getting set up for his Christia. And I'm not getting in the damage I need to be getting in. So my game plan is failing here, basically. I draw for turn. I draw a Smashing. I attack the set. It's a Shining Angel. And I'm like, I'll just Smashing whatever he gets. He gets a Herald of Orange. And I'm like, bruh. That means he has Brain Control too. I just Smashing to clear the Herald. But at this point, I'm like kind of boned. I probably should have let him brain control my Herald, but I was so low. I had to pay 4,000 on the smashing or er, on the mind control to not get like absolutely destroyed here. Passes a turn. I draw for card or I draw for turn. Pass the turn. Draw go. And Drago favors him every single time because he has Christia's. I have to keep two monsters out of play because he can double tribute for Christia. So here comes Grandmole. I do have it. That boy is here. Here comes Torrential. And I don't have my road, which is fine. My alchemist is going to add something back, but he has his own alchemist. He's going to add back Cyber Valley, and I'm going to add back probably Sangin here. I need to get a dark because I am playing Chaos Sorcerer in the post board game. So I, I add back the Sangin. I think I have Chaos Sorcerer in hand if I'm if I can see correctly. Um, 
I hand shuffle too much. I didn't know if my hand would be visible on the camera or not. Here comes Christia, but he has five fairies. So he's forced to soul release here first, which at least will get me to a certain point. Um, he's going to banish my light, my only light, which sucks, but yeah. So I have no I have no monsters in my graveyard right now. I'm going to special the Christia now. Christia is going to add back, I think, Shining Angel. I'm going to chain Bottomless. Oh no, add back Dialk. Here comes Normal Summon Dialk. Dialk, activate. Banish Call of the Haunted, attack. And then I think I Legacy try to draw into Trigodia and chain Mirror Force to make the D-Alk miss timing. So yeah, I go Legacy to try and draw into Trigodia, and then I'm like, he has no responses. I'll just chain Mirror Force. It'll put him up to four fairies, but his one Christia that I knew about is gone. He'd need to have a second Christia here for this to really punish me. Um, so yeah, basically that's what happens. He sets two more background passes, and I'm like, fuck me, dude. I have like not the best hand for pressuring. And then I get dust shooted. Or no, I get mind crushed and he hits the Sangin, which it does suck because I needed the Sangin to search a DD Warrior Lady, but I'm happy about it. He says, Do I reveal? And I'm like, no, because Sangin's a limited card. There's no potential copies of Sangin left in my hand. I go ahead and uh set or I just pass the turn. I think I did find Trigodi at some point. I draw for turn and it's card trooper. So I just summon card trooper, I mill three. It's not a great pressure, but 1900 is like okay like it's it's the biggest monster i have that i can normal summon basically but milling three cards is like kind of bad uh here can't see the life total because of the glare which is really unfortunate but yeah i think that was uh, almost first damage from him it was either the first or second attack he's taken um draw for turn yeah that, i think that was first damage this game he drops to 61 i attack the set monster um i don't mill first he's gonna flip the warrior lady he's not gonna banish and then I'm going to special Trigodia. And then main phase two, I'm going to... Do I try to steal the Warrior Lady? I don't remember. The reason I didn't the reason I didn't pump up the card trooper here is because if I was attacking into a set Shining Angel, I would just smash and ground it main phase two. I think I have a smash and ground. Oh no, I have a Chaos Sorcerer. Yeah, I have a Chaos Sorcerer. That's what it was. I'll just Chaos Sorcerer, banish the Warrior Lady, and pass. Um, and set the, set the back row, pass. He checks his grave. He has four fairies, but he doesn't have Christia here. He's basically forced to summon something or set something and pass. I draw for turn, it's Shining Angel, and my dumbass plays into Mirror Force. So all I really had to do this game to not lose is like switch my guys to defense. But I forgot that I didn't have multiple of these guys in play last turn and attacking. I thought for some reason I attacked with the track last turn and I had checked his back row for information um to see if it was mirror force but the only monster that attacked last turn was an unboosted card trooper which obviously is not going to mirror force so i'm like okay i'll just attack right i'll just mill three i check the life and i'm like he's almost dead i can just uh mill three with card trooper and if it's not mirror force too then like i just win straight up i attack with trag and he has mirror force and i'm just like bro all i had to do was switch my chaos sorcerer i was intending on using the chaos sorcerer main phase two anyway all I had to do was switch the Chaos Sorcerer and the Trag to defense, attack with the Card Trooper only, and then uh, this game was probably mine. Instead, I play like an idiot in the Mirror Force, and I get two for one. The Card Trooper replaces itself. It's just a bad situation to be in. I almost set the Reaper, but then he has Heavy Storm. He hits my double prison, and I get two for one into another really devastating two for one, and this game just falls apart. Uh, it all started with that fucking Mirror Force. I, I really should have played around it. That's definitely on me. That's definitely a mistake that cost me this game. And uh, yeah, definitely definitely something to think about. Definitely something to think about in the in the future. Um, just like making sure, paying attention. For for some reason, I thought I had attacked with the Trag, and I thought there was no reason he wouldn't mirror force the Trag and the Car Trooper. But there was never a moment where he could have mirror forced my Trigodia. And that was like just something I wasn't paying attention to. And it's a long game, you know, it's been a long match. There's a lot of things to pay attention to, and that was just one of those things. I Typhoon, he has Legacy, so I've gotten two for one three times this game. I do get to connect with Reaper, but he does have Gores. I'm going to Herald the Gores, so he's going to Herald my Herald, and then I'm going to be able to discard the DD Designator, but at this point, I am at such low life total, and I have one card remaining. He's going to switch the Gores. Um, he's going to attack the Reaper. The token has 300. He's going to set a back row pass. I draw for turn. I just have to switch the Reaper and pass and pray he doesn't find brain control. He still has brain control as an out. Uh, he does also still have DD Warrior Lady as an out. So he has like a bunch of ways to out my Spirit Reaper at this point. He just passes. 
I drop for turn, I find my own gores, which is useless at this point because I've dropped so low. I have to set another monster to try and like chill and vibe. I think I set a warrior lady here if I remember correctly. Yeah. Here he just summons warrior lady, attacks the reaper, banishes the reaper, attacks the set. It's my own warrior lady, activated, banishes gores, pass. We draw honest. I'm forced to set the honest because my life total's too low. And yeah, he passes the turn back. We draw into something. I don't even remember what we draw into. I pass. He draws for turn. And I think, no, not this. We draw compulsory. I don't know why I sided it in. I think I sided it in to shove damage through set monsters because that was my game plan. Uh, I also, I'm not sure if I sided in breakers this game, but I think I side the compulsory back out after this game because it was so bad. And I'm, I'm thinking compulsory is really bad in the mirror match. Here comes Space Typhoon. I chain compulsory. I don't even clear the token because it's a 300-300. There's no reason to clear it. So it's might as well just set him back on board with the monsters. He's going to flip Raiko, target my monster. I have to herald this. Uh, and I make a mistake not saving the herald. I should have pitched the other fairy monster in my hand. But I was making the play to win the game and not lose the game. I think the fairy monster in my hand is Christia. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Tough game. Tough game. This one was brutal. This one was brutal. I messed up a lot, I think, in this, in this game. Uh, but it's like, it's a miserable mirror match to begin with. He does end up having the return here, uh, which is just a win con. And yeah, we're going to the next one. Pretty brutal stuff. I, I definitely messed up that Mirror Force turn. If I had just played that correctly, I think I would have won for sure. Uh, there was no reason for me to ever lose my Chaos for sure that game. And that definitely cost me game two. So huge mistake. I open up with Dust Shoot, which is nice. But his hand is fucking insane. Uh, he has Angel, Honest, Christia, Call, Soul Release, Tarantial. And I'm basically forced to take the Angel. So this begins, this begins turn number one. I need him to not draw a, a fucking Shining Angel or Nova Summoner. So I basically just, I need him to blank on that for like a certain number of turns. You'll see. So he sets a monster passes. I have Smashing Ground. I have a Herald of Orange. I have no fucking monsters in my hand. So I just have a monsterless hand in my deck that plays hella monsters. And I'm just like, bruh, do I summon the Shining Angel, attack his Honest, take 16 just to smash and ground it? Like, is that really where I'm at? He has Call of the Haunted, so, like, he can just bring it back. Like, it's not, like, a good situation for me to be in, so I just pass. Uh, he flips the Honest, he attacks, and I take the 11. He bounces it, and then he sets a monster and passes. Could be the Honest again. I draw for a turn. Um, I remember seeing the way he shuffled his hand, and I noticed that he didn't shuffle the Honest to the, situ to the position where he set his monster. So I actually know that the set monster is the card he drew that turn and not the honest again. So I set back row in accordance with that. He draws for a turn. He flips it. It's a shining angel. So I dust shooted him and he top deck the shining angel immediately, which means his perfect hand is just back online again. He attacks. I have to mirror force this. That's why I set the mirror force. Um, I wouldn't have set the mirror force if I knew it wasn't a different monster, basically. Uh, anyway, he sets a back row. I am face typhoon the back row and that's call of the haunted. So call on the angel's gone so i basically just need him to miss on fairies so i can just otk him slowly you know what i mean ot multiple tk him attack with dd warrior lady for 15 he drops to 65 that's first blood i set a back row and pass he draws for turn he goes ahead and sets a back row i made a mistake there and this is something that a lot of people will make i set a back row picked it up and then set a different back row um if you haven't well it's also a bluff you can do basically Basically, you set a back row, and then um, if I pick it up and set a different back row, it's a tell that I have multiple back row, and that neither of them are Legacy or Starlight Road or Solemn Judgment. Because if I had multiple back row, and they were one of those three cards, I would just set them both. So now he knows my back row isn't Solemn Judgment, Legacy, or Starlight Road, just from that little body language mistake. Now knowing this, you can actually bait people by uh, setting a card, picking it up, and then setting the same card if you don't have multiple back rows. So you can bluff people that way. Um, like, pretend like you're going to set a different card, etc. Uh, but in this instance, I just gave him a tell for free. It's like an information tell. Uh, there's lots of, like, little body language things that happened in this match. Like, the thing with him shuffling his hand and me knowing that the set wasn't the honest. Here he passes the turn back. I have no reason not to flip my heavy. Yeah, I decided to set the heavy storm instead of my back row there. I knew his hand anyway, so it like, didn't really matter. I was just trying to get him to set the Tarantula plus some other cards. Here I summon another monster, I believe? Question mark. No, I just attack, I think. I don't know what I'm counting. Oh, no, I Synchro. I Synchro into Goyo. Because I figured uh, he would set Tarantula. 
He wouldn't set Torrential unless his set monster was Honest, which is a monster he's like okay losing in case this scenario happens. I attack his set monster, it's Honest, and I take it. Um, I set two back row, I believe, here. No, I just set the Dust Tornado. I have a Dust Tornado in hand. I can Dust and then set the Call off of it if he sets another back row. Uh, and if he doesn't set another back row, I can just set Call next turn, and my prob I'm probably not losing my Goyo or my Honest. So here, I just decide to attack with Goyo. If he has Shining Angel, he'll float. I have two Smashing Grounds. If he has Shining Angel, he'll float in a DD Warrior Lady, but it was Warrior Lady immediately. So I basically, it's like a 50-50, but it's more likely a chance that it's a Recruiter instead of a Warrior Lady. So, um, yeah, it was a 50-50, and it fucked me up, basically, because he banished my Goyo immediately, which sucks. Um, and my call isn't set, so I can't get in that extra 1500 here. I should have probably just set the call because if I'm thinking back to his hand, he basically needs to top deck either Heavy Storm or he needs to top deck a monster to set, but he can't top deck both. So I should have set the call and I missed 1500 damage here as a result. And I'm <laughs> so mad because <laughs> if I had it set, I get 1500 plus 1100, that's 2600 extra damage. And you'll see at the end of the game that that cost me the game. So tiny misplay here. Um, a turn prior, and yeah, he's able to set a monster here. I can just call DD Warrior Lady. The camera gets bumped at this point, which is a little bit unfortunate, but yeah, missing that 2600 sucks. I attacked with the Warrior Lady into his D Alk. I just let him have the D Alk effect. I'm like, that's fine. I have Smashing Grounds. I just need to force damage. I attack for 11. I attack for uh, 14. So I deal the 25. That extra 2600 last turn would have been insane for me. It would have been so good, but. Alas, here we are. I pass the turn. Here comes draw for turn. Uh, he's had a lot of opportunities to find brain control for T Warrior Lady. He's had a lot of opportunities to find different cards. He's got brain control here, but he decides to take the Honest, which is interesting. I think he's just like trying to bounce back the Honest and set it to keep his life total high. Um, as you can see from the life total, he's at 3,200. So that 2,600 would have put him at, or the brain control would have put him down to 800 had I gotten that, that turn of damage in. He sets a monster, he passes. Um... On our turn, we've got this two fucking smashing grounds, which is really annoying because, like, again, they do nothing against set monsters. And phase, I'm able to dust tornado his mind crush. On my turn, I draw for turn. I find, I believe, another shining angel. I attack with the warrior lady. I do take 400 here. Um, his guy's gonna get banished. I believe, or we're both gonna get banished. I could have elected not to banish here, but. I decided to banish. He's going to double defense position Honest to set up for a Christia. So he spends two Honests here to set up for his Christia, which I'm like kind of okay with because he's going to take 2,800 here down to 400. And as you can see, the miss damage is definitely costing me this match. I misplayed game two and game three against him. Uh, just really terrible mistakes. Um, and, and then they don't seem like terrible mistakes, but like for me playing this deck and someone who's been playing this deck a lot, they're definitely like huge mistakes. Anyway, um, yeah, hit him down to 400, and I'm like, next turn he can just special Christia, add back DL, run over both my Shining Angels, and I'm fucked. Like, I need to top deck a monster. So, this turn, I need him to not top deck uh, an actionable back row, and next turn I need to top deck a monster. So, two top decks kind of need to go in my favor to win next turn. I set a Smashing to Bluff. He just slams the Christia, he says, fuck it. Um, he's going to add back Shining Angel. Uh, but instead of crashing with the Shining Angels, he just attacks my Shining Angel, and then he has a plan to set his other Shining Angel. And then he drew an actionable back row. So I'm like, okay. So I draw for a turn. It's a D-Elk. And I'm like, okay, I can potentially win the game this turn or next turn. All I have to do is run over the Shining Angel, get my D-Elk and play next turn and smashing the Christia. And then I win, right? So I need him to not draw a monster this turn or an actionable back row. I drew the monster I needed to draw, but he drew an actionable back row. So yeah, I'm going to attack over his Shining Angel. I'm going to pass the turn. Basically, he's going to run over my Shining Angel. I'm going to take damage. Um, yeah, I don't want to commit the Alchemist because if he summons another monster, if he draws another monster, summons it, clears my Alchemist, I lose. I have double smashing. I can take the hit from both. And then on my turn, I can just double smashing and then win the game. He flips Legacy, so it's not actually actionable. Uh, but I didn't have the opportunity that turn to do it. It does give him an extra draw step towards uh, defense from that, basically. He attacks over the Shining Angel. He sets another monster, and I'm like, bruh. Can you not draw a monster in two draw steps? I find Grammel, and I'm like, okay, if I Grammel the Christia here, he can just resummon it because he's at four fairies. So basically what I need to do is summon the Alchemist, run over his monster, hope it's a fifth fairy, and I know about that soul release he's had since the first turn of the game. So like, 
I can't I can't put him up to five fairies here. I just have to summon Alchemist, banish something decent, run over his monster. It's a warrior lady. He's going to banish my Alchemist, and I've just lost because the Christia is lethal. He's also got Mirror Force, so he drew, like, two perfects off his draw step. I just needed him to, like, miss, like, draw, like, a Herald of Orange or something like that. Um, he attacks me, and that's going to drop me down to 1,300. He activates Gold Sark, and I'm like, maybe there's a chance. Um, I just need him to not have a monster here uh, or whatever. And then uh, he passes a turn back, or not have a, an actionable back row or a monster. He has an actionable back row. I'm able to summon Mole. I activate Smashing Ground. I attack, try to attack for game, and he has the Mirror Force, and that's going to be that. So, yeah, a lot of misplays on my part. He needed to get a couple of draw steps right. He got those draw steps right. He got, like, the, the Mirror Force. He um, wasn't playing into double smashing, which was good on his part. I don't know if he saw smashing earlier in the match, but... Yeah, he wasn't playing into it. He also wasn't playing into, like, D-Prisons and stuff. What I maybe should have done was not actually set any back row behind my Angels to, like, try and incentivize him to summon two monsters. And then on that turn where he had Legacy, maybe I could have beat him uh, with a normal summon and then double Smashing Ground. But at that point, I think the biggest mistake that game was the the Call of the Haunted thing, not setting it the same turn I set the Dust Tornado. Because he would have had, had to either draw Heavy Storm or he would have had to draw um, a monster to set... And if he draws Heavy Storm and he clears both my cards, then I hit him for a bunch. And if he draws a monster to set, then I can call DD Warrior Lady. I can DD Warrior Lady the monster, and I can get him with Goyo and Honest for twenty nine or 3,900 even, and then just, like, really, really lock up the game that way with the Smashing Ground. So uh, big mistakes on my part, both in Game 2 and Game 3, definitely costing me. All right, next match, next match, next match. Next match is up against um, Goaded Cardboard, a.k.a. Justin, the realist. The realist, we got to put this on 2x speed because we're never going to get through this video. Oh my gosh, we're already 45 minutes in. It's only the third match. Bro, this is some cash money content. All right, he wins a die roll, which is insanely unlucky, I think, for me. Yeah, he wins a die roll. And if you look at his hand, yeah, I don't think you could have stacked a better hand. Let's take a look at his hand here real quick. Let's take a look at his hand. Let's just play this. Play. Play. Okay. So let's see. He's got Charge of the Light Brigade... <laughs> Mind Control, Dandelion. So he's going to go Charge Mill 3. Hits Quillbolt Hedgehog off the Charge Mill. And I'm like, okay, that's insane. He's going to search for Raikou. He's going to activate nothing. He's going to set a monster, set a background pass. Now the set card is Mind Control. The set card monster is, I believe, Raikou. So my opening hand is like not super happy about this. I'm going to Rota for Warrior Lady and just try to banish his monster and... Um, try to get a monster in my banner zone. I attack into a set monster, and it's fucking Morphing Jar. So I'm like, do I just accept this? He has four cards in hand. He's going to discard four cards. He's probably going to get a ton of value. Um, or do I or do I anticipate that his hand is bricky, and that's why he wanted to set the Morphing Jar with four cards in hand? And I'm like, I'm going to anticipate his hand is bricky. I'm going to Herald of Orange to negate the Morphing Jar here. Um... And that was like a tough decision to make because I'm like, he does have four cards in hand. Like he's only getting a plus one off of this morphing jar and he's losing his morphing jar. So it's like a one for one. I would be losing my whole hand and drawing five new cards. My hand had Gores in it. My hand had Herald in it, but the Herald's gone now. And now my hand is like DD Warrior Lady Return Gores and one other card, which I believe is Trigodia. And Trigodia is pretty bad here. So I'm like, maybe I should have just let the jar resolve because the aftermath is... My hand is not very playable. Um, but that being said, like, I did not anticipate his hand to be actually good if he was setting Jar with four cards in hand, right? Like, he has Raikou, I know. He top decks one for one. So he's able to one for one pitch Dandy, special summon Cyber Valley. And then I'm like, bruh, I lose. Like, I am just behind so many cards. He even has a mind control here, which he's just not using. He just dr draws two new cards. Oh, what's that? Pot of Avarice with five monsters now because he's able to pitch the quick draw to make the drill. I'm just like, bro, how did this fall apart so quickly? Like, what happened? I just got like fucking four power spells re resolved on me. I feel like I'm playing GOAT format. I feel like I just got Charity. Do I feel like I just got Trinity, bro. Here comes Mind Control. Oh, but no, he's actually not going to activate the mind control. He's just revealing it to me to flex on me how powerful his draw is. And I'm like, bro, 
He's going to normal Lone Fire, and he didn't draw Titanial, of course, because why would you ever draw Titanial? And I'm just sitting here like, how do I, how do I ever win this game? And he just trades the, the Titanial with the Warrior Lady, like, like it's not even a big deal. He's like, I still got a handful of cards, attack for 24. I've got Gores. I've got a Gores and a Dream. He's able to pitch Sangin, banish the Gores, pass the turn back. I draw Christia, and I'm like, maybe I can make this happen. Holy shit. Maybe I'm actually out here. I can go ahead and attack with both, deal 5,100, which is a ton of damage. Basically drop him to 29, double sack for Christia. If I draw any monster next turn, I can go for game. Now, I know he has Ryko in hand. I know he has mind control set, so he has one other card in hand. The Drill Warrior is not coming back. Despite him opening the nuts, I'm actually kind of chilling. I set my return in case my Christia gets outed. Like, let's say he mind controls my Christia, summons Valley, and banishes it. Then the return being live is good for me. So I set the return. He goes ahead and draws return. He normal summons Ryko, and then he activates his top decked creature swap. And I'm just sitting here like, why do I play this game? Why do I fucking play this game? This is insane. The most insane loss of my life, of my tournament career. I'm sitting here, I'm like, bro, I literally, you see me lift up my hands at this moment. Watch me lift up my hands. I'm like, bruh. And I had to like put my hands on my fucking forehead because I'm like, I'm one draw step away from coming back from the absolute nut start. And this is what happens. Attacks over the Raikou. And now I just have nothing. I'm like, down to 17. I know he has mind control set. There's no draw in my deck that gets me out of this besides D Prison. I need to top deck D Prison. I check my card that I draw. I set it. It's Card Trooper. He looks at his mind control. He draws return. Doesn't even activate the mind control. Doesn't even activate it. Epic BMs me. Sacks the Christia for Caius. Targets my set monster. Attacks. I have return, but I'm top decking the dead Christia next turn. And I'm just like, dude. What a brutal game. What a brutal loss. I think I had like four or five power spells resolved on me. Um, and on top of that, he had the mind control still chilling. Like, I respect him for not using the mind control, but god damn. So, the next game, I'm like, how much back row could he have, right? I side out my Typhoon. I side out my Storm. I side in all of my trap cards. <sighs> you know what's happening. You already know what's happening. I open up. Look at my hand. I got two trap cards, I got a Sangin, I got a Reaper, I got a Grandma, I got a Smashing. I'm like, okay, that's a pretty good hand, right? He starts off, right? Starts off with Mind Control. Flips it, it's Sangin. I'm like, thank God I didn't set the Reaper, right? He normal summons Junk Synchron. I have no back row for this. He synchros into Goyo Guardian. I search. I'm going to grab Shining Angel because it turns on my hand, right? He goes ahead, and he attacks. Now, he doesn't need to attack here. He's already kind of crushing it, but he attacks. And I'm like, I'll take 28 because I have Grand Mole, and Grand Mole outs Goyo Guardian. I won't spend my trap cards here. So I summon Grand Mole, I attack the Goyo Guardian, and I set my third trap card, and I'm like, there's no way I'm losing this game, right? Wrong. He flips Decree. So I drew a third trap card for turn, flips Decree, draws for turn, sets Monster, I believe. No, Normal Summon is Lone Fire. Hits me for another 28. And I'm like, I have outs to this, but I've already taken 5,600. But then again, he doesn't have Titanium. He just grabs Dandelion. I'm like, okay, I can Grand that. But if I Grand that and he has Quick Draw, I can't out it because the Decree is up. If I Smashing it and attack him, he still has a live Caius. So it's like, there's no real good, there's no real win here. There's basically just no real win here. I'm forced to just go like Shining Angel, set, pass. That's basically all I can do. I could attack over the Dandy, give him two tokens. But then he contributes some of the Titanial that I know is in his hand, which I don't want him to be able to do, basically. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have done that. You'll see his top deck for turn, sacks the Dandy for Caius, and I'm just like, bro. I have pulling the rug set, and I'm looking at this decree, and I'm like, okay, now I'm going to drop down to 2,800. I guess, um, yeah, yeah. Basically, I'm one Titanial attack away, and he has two tokens. I draw for turn, another trap card. I'm like, I can't Grand Mole this Caius. I have to Smash and Ground it. Um, I'm going to set my Reaper and pass. He draws for turn. It's Plague Spreader Zombie. He double sacks for Titanial. 
he attacks my set monster, it's Spirit Reaper. Main phase two, he just passes the turn. We draw another trap card. So I've now drawn six trap cards into an active decree. I normal summon Grand Mole. I've drawn three monsters, six trap cards. I bounce his monster. I attack with Reaper, try to hit one of his actionable cards. I hit the Titanial, of course. Pass the turn back. He draws for turn. He rips Quick Draw off the top. He's able to go Quick Draw, Pitch, Plague, Normal Summon, Level Eater, Synchro. And this is actually lethal, I think. Um, I'm at 28. I think it's game. I need to run the numbers. Because I think if he goes... Stack for Plague. Bring out Level Eater. No, no, Stack for Plague, Synchro into Colossal, bring out Level Eater. It's more than 28 over the Reaper. And I just lose. So, yeah. Either way, I'm going to lose because I drew six trap cards into an active decree and I sided out all of my decree outs. I draw Christia and I don't have any fairies in my graveyard. And I'm like, hmm, damn dog, that's crazy. I'm going to set. I'm at 700. Drill comes back. He adds back Dandy. And that's going to be the match. And I was like, dude, I've never been fucked that hard in a match before. Uh, that was some prime Yu-Gi-Oh variants. That was brutal. That was a really, really brutal game. Uh, I didn't draw Herald. I didn't draw, like, basically any of the things I needed to interact with. And I sided out all my Decree outs. I just drew six cards that were completely dead to Decree. So, yeah, huge Floodgate moment. Uh, definitely unfortunate tournament game. But it happens. I mean, that's, that's Yu-Gi-Oh, you know? That's just life. The game against Tommy, I definitely should have won. That game, there was no way in hell I was winning that game. <laughs> like, with my draws, there was just, I just couldn't have done anything. The only thing I could have done differently was, like, side in breakers as well. Which does come up. So this round is up against, um, god damn it. Who's it up against? Does it say? It doesn't say who I'm playing against. Fuck. <laughs> I remember his last name. I remember his last name being Garcia. He starts off with the quarry set three, and I'm like, great. It's going to be a great tournament. I brought the anti-Blackwing, anti-Hero B deck, and I played against neither of those decks. I thought SoCal was supposed to be full of those. What the fuck? I haven't even play played against Vayu Turbo, which my deck is supposed to be good against. I attack with the card trooper. He books it. Main phase two, I smashing his lack. And then I set two and pass. He draws return. He normal summons a guy, I think. Does he? Oh, no. He trunades me. And I'm like, bruh. I had solemn road set. And I'm like, I'm going to solemn his normal summon. And if he tries to heavy me, I have road. So I'm like, I'm going to get ahead, basically. But then he has fucking Trunade, and I'm like, bro. He goes Proving Ground, Normal Summon Guy. And this isn't the worst situation for us, because he's he had to spend a card to stick this guy. But then he Special Summons Test Tiger. But then he goes into Sam Knight again, which I'm okay with, because it's basically like he's trading the Tiger for the Chariot. I thought he would go Secutor, attack into the Car Trooper, and then get like a plus three. Um, instead, he goes just Sam Knight, and then gets the... War Chariot, which I'm okay with, because I can play through one War Chariot, you know? And then he's going to tag out the Sam Knight, and he's going to be able to get um, E-Quest and add back the Laquari, I believe. Yeah. So it's just a plus one for him off the Tiger. It's still a very good plus one, but he was down minus one from the True Nade. So he sets three and passes. On my turn, I draw. I normal summon Warrior Lady. I have Warrior Lady Honest. I'm still up cards. Or, not Warrior Lady, but Shining Angel. He has to read Shining Angel. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. I attack... I uh, use Honest, he chariots the Honest, I special summon Warrior Lady, I attack with the Warrior Lady, I banish his monster, and I uh, ask him to keep his banish zone face up here. Yeah, it's important to keep your banish zone face up, because there are cards that banish face down. Anyway, I've drawn Deep Prison Solemn, so I'm like, I'm probably okay here. Or not Deep Prison, sorry, Star Solemn Starlight. Um, so I'm probably okay here, I can just Solemn his next normal summon. I pass the turn back, he normal summons a guy. Where is it? He normal summons the Quarry. And I solemn it. Now, if you see him, he was looking at which card he wanted to normal summon, which means he has two monsters, which means I need to stick something that can defeat a monster on my next turn or I lose. So, yeah, that's a big, big, important thing that I need to do uh, or else he just cascades advantage and loses. So I draw for turn. I have DD Warrior Lady. Hopefully this DD Warrior Lady sticks. Um, I'm not going to attack with it. But he does have his own Solemn. Now, he could have Solemned my Solemn back and just beat me. Um, but him Solemning with my monster is functionally the same because he has another monster. He has Darius here. So he's just going to summon Darius, attack me, tag into Bestie, just pray it's not bottomless. Obviously, it's not. I would have bottomless the, the thing. Actually, he doesn't go Bestie. He goes to Quest. 
Yeah, very smart play. Just going a quest, getting back his card advantage. Uh, but yeah, game one's a wash. I get I get a quest looped out of it. I have Freed to attack over, but then he top decks the quarry, and he's able to attack over my Freed. So things look tough. And then we go to the next game. Next game, I side in a whole bunch of shit. Um, oppression. I sided in a lot of breakers, compulsory, chaos sorcerer, cyber dragons, that sort of thing. And let's go ahead and get into it. My opening hand has a couple of cards that are really bad versus glads, but such is life. I didn't side out my dust shoot because I was going first. He starts off with special summon cyber dragon, and he spends a knock on my sangin, which I'm actually pretty okay with. He summons mermillo, and I have torrential, so I'm just going to use it. I'm going to get my two for one. Um, I could have used it on the cyber dragon summon, but I was saving it for a glad summon. He sets a back row and passes. I summon breaker. I do have typhoon, but I'm going to try to just pop his back row and uh, get my plus one. And it was a mirror force, so I get a huge plus one. I'm able to attack for 16, and I think I just pass the turn. I have a live herald, I believe, and I have some other stuff. He has Laquari. Laquari can tag into Equest and get his Mermilla back, which is really annoying, but that's pretty much all it can do, you know? Yeah, he tags. I think he has to go Equest, get back the Mermilla to get a plus. He sets a back on passes, and now I can Typhoon. And I have Breaker, and Breaker can just run over the Equest. And Breaker also outclasses uh, a lot of his cast. I joke here, he has a Shrink. I asked if he wanted to chain his Shrink targeting his Equest. <laughs> anyway, I attack over the Equest for 300. And yeah, this is just how powerful Breaker is in this matchup. He's already gotten me a couple of pluses. Uh, just 1900 B6, really difficult for him to deal with. His hand is like Mermillo, two unknowns. His Shrink is gone, which is an actionable way to clear Breaker. He could have Book of Moon, which would be annoying, but again, we have Herald of Orange. Here comes Mermillo, here comes Special Test Tiger. And I make a mistake here. I thought for sure he was going to go into Mermillo again, um, but I forgot that he can go into Laquari. And so what I should have done was just Herald his Tiger. Um, so it was, it was a mis mistake for me not to herald the tiger. Uh, I also was a little bit worried about him having um, another tiger. So I wanted to bait him into going into Mermillo and just blowing up the uh, guy. But he goes into Laquari for sure. And I'm like, oh, that was really stupid of me. He's going to clear my breaker for free here. And so a pretty big misplay on my part. Uh, when he goes to tag out, I'm going to herald it. So it shuffles back for cost. It doesn't actually go to the graveyard, the Laquari, um, because it's no longer in the place that it can be destroyed by Herald, but the effect is negated. I draw for turn, I have Card Trooper D Prison, I'm gonna mill three, I reveal Dust Shoot, I'm like, I gotta remember to side that out for game three. I attack for 19, drop him kinda low, he summons Sam Knight, he attacks, I D Prison, I draw for turn, I mill three, I attack for 19, I don't remember what I drew, I drew Smashing Ground, so I'm big chillin'. He draws Proving Ground, uh, which is pretty good for him, cause it'll allow him to get his monster stream going again, but, once again, we have another draw of this card trooper. Uh, I have Smashing Ground. I have a lot of stuff going for me. And he decides, he looks at my graveyard, and he notices, like, I have three fairies. And he's, like, thinking about it, you know? Which is good for me, because I don't actually have Christia in post-board, I believe. He goes ahead and E-Quest, add back E-Quest. And as long as I draw a monster that's bigger than 1600, I'm chilling. I draw for turn. I draw Cyber Dragon. I'm like, all right, there we go. This is how this deck loses. They just can't out a Cyber Dragon. Sets a monster passes. I check my graveyard. I'm like, all right, whatevs. I have Christia. I did actually not side it out. <laughs> I'm just capping. I just don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I must have misboarded this game. I think I'm supposed to side out Christia in this matchup because of like Chariot and shit, but I could be wrong. Anyway, I tackle versus Guy. I just pass. Um, he's looking at his hand. I could have called the Haunted a Guy and double sacked for Christia, but I felt like it was unnecessary. Uh, here I go summon Alchemist. Uh, now I call the haunted i believe and yeah that's just gonna be game because his life total is so low so yeah that was a uh, game game two basically showcasing how you beat glads is you just summon a beat stick and they have to out beat sticks every single turn and you eventually just run them out of outs because their monsters can't get over a certain stat line they're all like at the worst threshold the worst thresholds in edison are uh 1600 and 2200 2200 because it can't get over bionic armed wing and it can't get over Caius, and then 1600 because it gets hit by bottomless and it can't be fetched off a recruiter. So it's, those are the worst stat lines, basically. And Glads has a bunch of 1600 monsters, or worse. Here comes Heavy Storm. That's just going to two for one for me, and I'm like, let's go, baby. And then I go ahead and... um, I don't remember what I do here. You know, I'm going to be real, I don't remember. I think I go DD Warrior Lady Banish or Shining Angel Crash Crash Banish. Yeah, I want Shining Angel, Crash, Crash, Banish. I cited out two Shining Angels. Or no, I cited out one Shining Angel. 
So I'm just going to be able to do this twice. Or maybe I do it a third time. No, I do it twice, yeah. And then I'll do this and banish this guy. I have a Torrential, I believe, in hand. So I'm big chilling. Heavy Storm is insane. The card's so broken. He draws return. I think he's the best Yari. He just plays the guy. I flipped the nothing. He attacks for 16. I'm like, all right, whatever. Maybe it's not Torrential. I don't remember what I said here. What the hell? Might have been Dust Tornado. Oh, yeah, it might have been Dust Tornado. Their arts look kind of similar from the camera. So, yeah, here he could tag into... Um, he could tag into Bestiari and pop my Dust. But instead, he goes Ready Ari and he banishes my Shining Angel. And then he passes the turn. I draw for turn. I find Breaker number one. I'm like, I'm winning right now. I'm just going to summon DD Warrior Lady, run over the Ready Ari, and I'm not going to banish it. I'm going to pass. And he doesn't have a way to clear the Warrior Lady very effectively. This card is so insane versus Glads because it's just a beat stick that, like, it will guarantee you trade if they don't have Chariot. They basically have to have Chariot or else it'll keep their monsters clear. And phase I dust them to play around uh, Trap Dust, I believe. And it was a proving ground. And I'm like, okay, he has no back row. I'm just going to summon this Breaker and beat him for 1900 every single turn. He summons Darius, sets back row passes. I use Breaker. It forces a Wind Blast from him. He puts the Breaker back on top of my deck. And I'm like, thank you. I just summon another guy, uh, another Breaker, because <laughs> I have a second one in hand. I run over Darius. Both games drawing two Breaker, very lucky. Uh, that's why I want to side the full three. You just want to see it in matches like this. Hit for 38, and that's going to be game. Uh, pretty much after the next turn's draw step, I believe. He draws return, he checks, and then, yep, concession. So, yeah, good stuff. Solid solid match versus Glad. So I'm at 2-2 two and two at this point. Next match is versus Pizza. He was also at 2-2, two and two, and we're basically trying to get one of those 4-2 slots in top 8. Uh, he's a top 8 player from RBET Orlando. This is probably the most... Um, the most hype of all the matches of the day yeah i think the most like high profile him or like tommy i guess but him for sure because i think he's top eight in multiple i start off with set three pass i know what he's playing because i asked him how many cards were in his deck at the start of the match and he said 45 and that's how many cards were in his deck at the top eight of rbet orlando so i'm very happy that i have access to these lists as well because i know his deck list um i can dust shoot him or I start off with Dust Shoot, and I see a really scary hand. He's got Gores, Necro, Rhoda for Greffer, Norlaris, Sirocco, and Dark Creator. I believe I have Torrential Tribute set. So I'm like, if he goes Rhoda for Greffer, and then he sets up the Armed Wing, I'll just Torrential him. So I'm going to take the Dark Creator, because that's his follow-up. That was my game plan. And I never have to play into Gores. And Necro Gardner doesn't do anything. And Norlaris doesn't do anything. So his only play is basically Greffer, Pitch, Sirocco. And then he can either leave the Sirocco stuff in the grave, which is good for me. Or he can um, he can go for it and then get two for one into Tarantula, basically. So I take the thing, and then he doesn't shuffle yet because he's thinking if he wants a Rota. And then, yeah, he doesn't want a Rota here. He just passes a turn. I draw for turn. I know he has Gores. I drew another back row. I have Starlight Road, and I have Tarantula, I believe, are my two sets. I have, I think, Trigodia in hand. Or it might be Gores. I think I might have drawn Gores for sure for turn. I set up the life total. Still can't see it because of the fucking glare. Bruh. Bruh. Draw for turn, pass. I've got Space Typhoon in my hand. I'm like, that's useless. He draws for turn. Uh, the Space Typhoon could help me get my Gore's life if that's a Gore's. It might be a Trag. I don't know. He card destructions me. It was Trag, yeah. So I had Rhoda. I was thinking about summoning the DD Warrior Lady and attacking, but that just procs Gore's. So there's no reason for me to really do that. He goes for card destruction, which is really good for me because I didn't have a very good hand. And then here he goes Allure. He banishes a card. He has all this draw stuff going. He's going to banish Chaos Sorcerer. He's going to go trade in, pitch Dark Creator. And that's actually insane for me. I thought he would for sure special summon the Dark Creator and start using it to bring back his Gores or bring back his Sirocco to start attacking me. I thought that would be the best open up play because that baits Herald and it baits, um, it baits Torrential and stuff. But he's just trying to find the Phantom basically, which I don't really agree with, because at this point he's seen zero heralds, and he hasn't seen like Torrential or Compulsory or Book of Moon, which sometimes the fairy deck plays. So he's just not trying to bait my back row at all. He's just trying to turbo into it. He goes for Giant Trunade, which is arguably good. Like this is arguably should work for him, right? This should be a very easy Phantom of Chaos, Norlaris Nuke. But he did card destruction me into the Herald. So he's going to activate it, banish the Norlaris, you want to wait for him to activate the Phantom Effect, copy the Norlaris Effect, then activate the Norlaris Effect, because the Phantom doesn't banish the Norlaris for cost. So you want to make sure he banishes the Phantom, and then when he activates the Norlaris Effect, he has to pay 1,000 for cost. So you get 1,000 life points by waiting for him to activate the Norlaris Effect. 
I herald it. Uh, he's checking his hand, and he already normal summoned, so he's basically just forced to pass. And at this point, I'm like, I have Torrential. His true nade is gone. I'm safe from the next Phantom. I'm probably going to win this game. As long as I can just pressure his life total. His Gores is gone now, too, because he card destructioned it. I'll hit for 18. I'll set four, and I'll pass. And now it's just like, how can he play through this? His deck can't really play through this. Even though I have that dead nobleman, um, the rest of my hand is like really good. I draw Honest. I'm going to activate the Alchemist. I'm a normal Honest. I attack with the Alchemist. He actually makes a really good play here. He pops my Honest. I think this is the best play um, from him just to keep his life total high. Because that's all he needs to do right now is just keep his life total high. He does have a Necrogardner, but there's no real reason to use it on like an 1100 attack when you can just blow that up. He draws another monster. He sets Raiko, he passes. Uh, I'm going to Legacy of Yada to just trying to find additional pressure. I find Herald of Orange, so I have Herald, Shining Angel, and Nobleman. And I'm like, I'll just save the Herald, because like worst case scenario, he sets up a Dark Creator. Um, and then I'll, I'll have Tarantula plus Herald for that. I check his Grave just to see what's up, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to attack. The reason I did this too is if I attack and it's another Raiko and he hits my Tarantula, I want to make sure I have Herald for Phantom of Chaos or Dark Creator. I banish bottomless, I attack, it's Raiko. Uh, he asks me here if Raiko will make Dimensional Alchemist miss timing. And this is something that you guys should know for tournament play. You don't have to tell your opponent that. And so basically I was like, I am not going to tell you that. Um, I'm not going to tell you that unless um, unless you want to do it. Like, I, I can only tell you after you've done it, basically. And I was like, I can pull up a translation card for you, but if you want to if you want to blow it up, um, I can't tell you whether or not it'll miss timing until after you've made the action. He decides to blow it up anyway, um, and it does make it miss timing. Um, so it was it was good for him to ask, but again, like this is a tournament game. This is for like real stakes. You know, the winner of this gets like a five hundred dollar console potentially. So um, yeah, you're not obligated to tell your opponent the rollings until they come up. Basically, uh, solar recharge, pitch, Jane, mill two. If it was a newer player, I might have just been like, yeah, whatever. But um, I think in this instance, like you're a, you're a top eight competitor. Um, I'm gonna treat it like a like a serious game, you know, like a professional game. He mills two off the solar recharge, mills another phantom, so now I know he only has one phantom left in his deck. I'm basically just trying to run him out of win cons. His deck mills really fast, and so like even with 45 cards, he does deck out. Like he said one of his losses to me after the match, he said one of his losses in the previous rounds was to himself decking himself out in the Vayu Turbo Mirror. Um a lot of graveyard checking happening here. Uh goes ahead and foolish burial sends Vayu. Vayu going to activate, uh, but we have removal spells for days, so this is like not a big deal. He's going to Vayu activate. His burial got milled, so I know once the Vayus get used here, they're used for good. Here comes Armed Wing. Armed Wing attacks. We have a deep prison. Just draw go. He recharges, pitches Lila, mills two, mills another Lila, and I'm like, damn, I'm so happy those Lilas are not hitting me and hitting my back row right now. Um, but yeah, here comes Normal Summon Greffer. I let this through. Activate, pitch Elfin. Uh, Elfin's gonna send the, or not Elfin, Greffert's gonna send the last Vayu. He's gonna activate that, uh, later. I think he attacks for 17 first. Yeah, he attacks for 17, but I have Call on Christia, and this game's over. So, yeah, we're gonna go to game two, basically, after this. Now, I learned from my mistakes. In the first round, I lost to Royal Decree. And in this game, I'm like, I'm just gonna side in Breakers Blind. I don't care. I'm going to side in the Breakers blind, and hopefully, you know, they have targets. Hopefully they hit things, because um, I cannot afford to stare down another Royal Decree, especially in this matchup where I just need my trap cards. So, yeah. We go into this game. He starts off with trade-in pitch Dark Creator. Always happy to see Dark Creator hit the grave. I never want to see that card hit play. One thing that these decks need to do a better job of, or the players who play these decks need to do a better job of, is just value creatoring people. Because the creator activating every turn is insane, and it's really hard to get rid of. Because um, 3,000 defense is ridiculous. I hit for 1,500, drop him to 65. Here, he thinks for a very long time. And I mean like a very long time. And then he rotas. He goes and grabs Dark Refer. I don't know if I... I think I have a live Herald. So one thing I want to point out is like, watch my body language here. So I summon my Warrior Lady. I have a live Herald and a Gors. I'll show you guys here in a second. So I attack for with DD Warrior Lady. I look at my hand a little bit, right? Pass the turn. Set my hand down. And I'm just waiting. I'm just literally just waiting. Like not looking at my hand 
not pretend like not if you're like staring too intently at your hand if you're like you know like being too attentive it gives away that you could have a hand trap right it gives away that you could have herald or gores right so i'm just like rota i'm just like chilling not even affirming whether or not the rota resolves dark gray for well affirming like yeah that's good you know what i mean like but not being like like not waiting too long to say like okay you know what i mean like not thinking about like oh whether or not i have plays Greffer, i'm like yeah that's good you know whatever like you can see that like short thumbs up i give you know what i mean look at this look at this Greffer gets summoned activates short thumbs up yeah Greffer's gonna get summoned Greffer's gonna activate i said short thumbs up that's good you know what i mean like basically bluffing that i don't have the herald this is important to do because people will play like oh he doesn't have herald i'm just gonna go in full fuck it in into it basically here he makes a very interesting play um he thinks for a very long time he activates the value he special summons armed wing and then he attacks the warrior lady with the armed wing and i was like why did he do that like i don't i don't know why he would want to get rid of his stronger monster I was scared that he was going to summon the armed wing, set deck devastation virus, and then pass. In which case, it would have been a good opportunity for me to herald the Greffer. But I was just taking the gamble that in 45 cards, he didn't open deck devastation virus, basically. I just took that gamble. He sets one and passes. And I'm like, okay, he didn't attack into my gores. Um, I'm pretty happy about that. I've got a breaker in my hand. He's got a back row. Let's make use of this card that I sided in, right? So I'm going to summon Breaker, get my token, and I'm like, it's most likely a Decree. So I'm just going to attack his Greffer first. I attacked, and he actually books my Breaker. And I'm like, that's honestly a really, really good situation for me. I traded my Breaker with the back row, which is what I wanted. I didn't get to clear the Greffer, but I still have Herald. I still have Gores. So I'm actually still chilling. I pass a turn. I shuffle through my hand once. And again, I set my hand down. I sort of like you know, just like give a passive body language. Like I don't have anything. He goes card trooper mill three. I'm like, that's good. You know, he's going to go ahead and um, attack, I believe. No, I don't know. He asked me how many cards were in hand. I said five. He's obviously thinking about it, right? Like he's obviously thinking like, oh, he could have Harold, but there's no way for him to know outside of my body language. So I haven't given him any reason to believe that I have Harold or that I have Greffer or that I have Gores. He attacks for 17. I dropped the Gores and then that's all she wrote. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got the pressure now. I've dealt 1,500 already with DD Warrior Lady. I'm looking at my hand. He's going to go Chaos Sorcerer in main phase two. He's going to try to activate it, targeting the Gores. And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, he has no Norlaris in the graveyard. He has no um, Phantom of Chaos that we know about. I want to clear both his monsters just to make sure he can't get Norlaris in the graveyard. If he goes Phantom, copy Sork, banish my Gores or something, like, I'm chill with that. I'm cool with that. So I'm just going to herald the Chaos Sorcerer and keep my Gores in play. Because I think that that's like way more important than um, than saving it for the Phantom here. I think not being able to clear the Sorcerer would be a guaranteed loss for me. Hold up, I got to cough, folks. <coughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, we're back. We're back. Anyway, main phase two. He activates the Greffer. He pitches Necro Garden and he sends Plague, I believe. Yep. A lot of thinking going on for that move. And now he could stack for Plague, which I wouldn't... Honestly, I think is not a bad play. And he can make Mistworm and bounce both my cards. Or he can make Goyo Guardian and just be, like, kind of chilling. Because Goyo Guardian beats both Gores and my token. But instead, he just passes. And I'm like, all right, well, he has Necro Garden down. He has Plague and Grave. He has no Norlaris and Grave. What am I going to do here? I draw Shining Angel. I have a couple of options. I can summon the Angel and try to crash into the Greffer, but he'll just Necro Garden at a gate that attack. And then next turn, it gives him the opportunity to um, stack for Plague and do stuff with the Plague, like make a Goyo Guardian. That being said, what I should have done, I think I drew, I think I have Trap Dust Shoot in my hand. I can't really tell. Is that Trap Dust Shoot? I think it might be Trap Dust Shoot. He might have two cards in hand. Yeah. I think that's what it is. What I actually should have done here was summon the Shining Angel. And I make a pretty big mistake. But I switched these two. I thought for some reason I wouldn't be able to dust shoot him. Because I wanted to clear the Greffer like no matter what. But in hindsight, what I should have wanted to clear 
was the card trooper so that I could dust shoot him. So I go to battle phase, I attack the Greffer, he goes ahead and uses Necrogarna to negate the attack, and then here I attack the card trooper, and I thought for some reason I would, would, would have wanted to crash into the Greffer, but then I realized attacking the card trooper is better because the card trooper can attack over the token, whereas Greffer can't do that, and then main phase 2 I can double sack for Christia um, and lock out his plague. And so he basically has to find um, Norlaris this turn. Uh, and so I think I think either way it's fine, because I was able to turn on my dust shoot. But um, I think it would have been best if I... Um, I'm losing my train of thought. I, I think it would have been best if I... Fucking, what is it? Summoned the angel first, and then forced it that way, cleared both his monsters, and then had a live dust shoot. I think I definitely made a mistake on this turn. And then I also make another mistake because I forgot the card trooper drop put him up to four. So I like I like let let him go to main phase and let him trade in and draw two cards. And at this point, I'm like, oh wait, he has four cards in hand. I need to dust shoot him. I see him fan out his hand like that, and I see four cards. I'm like, oh shit, I need to dust shoot him now. I dust shoot him now, he reveals his hand, and it was the worst time for me to dust shoot him because he has allure plus two darks. So it's just like, if he finds Phantom um, and another Dark, he can beat me. He can, Or even just Phantom. Phantom can copy the um, Chaos Rusher, and he can banish my Christia, and I just fall apart and lose. So, yeah, um, this was really bad uh, sequencing on my part for, like, these two turns. Uh, just terrible, terrible play, but uh, thankfully he just whiffs. I mean, you guys see the timer on the video. He just whiffs. He doesn't find Phantom. He can't out Christia. And I beat him to death with a Sangin. And that's it. And that's how it goes. Here I summon the Thunder King. And yeah, it's just damage. So GG's. GG's to Pizza. Um, I think he got very unlucky in this game. Uh, I played terribly. But uh, the Breaker was important. It did clear the Book of Moon for the Christia. And I'm happy I sided them in. All right, last round. Last round is actually against Forest Dent, so once again, check him out. Peep his channel. He's a big quick draw enjoyer. We are playing quick draw versus fairies in the last round. This is for 4-2 and a potential chance at top 8. Um, as you can see, he wins a die roll. So things don't look good for your boy, because quick draw is actually, I think, a tough matchup. He starts off with Foolish Burial Send Dandelion, which is very strong, especially if he has Debris Dragon. I don't have Herald of Orange, so Debris would be crushing here because he'd be able to resolve Stardust, and then future Herald of Oranges would be dead into that Stardust. He has Pitch, Volcanic Shell, Special, Quick Draw. Activate Shell, drop to uh, 75. Search the Shell. Drill Warrior, pitch the other Shell. Pay another 5. Search the third Shell. And so he's like fully stacked, fully stacked and set up. He's got the Drill, Dandy, and Grave. He's got a couple of Trap Cards, passes the turn back. I draw for turn, and I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> Sangin? Attack the token, set a back row pass. He draws for turn. He gets the drill back. Drill's going to add back Dandy. I don't have Herald of Orange. And I'm just like, dude, I'm getting owned here. He goes ahead and halves the drill. And then attacks me. And this is a huge mistake. Never do this. Never attack into his. Because I have a deep prison. And so I get my two for one. But the card's kind of replaced itself. And then he fakes me out. With that attack, because main phase two, oh, he just passes here. He doesn't set another monster, and I'm like, huh, why would he only, why would he not set a monster here? Why would he not set the dandelion? And I'm like, maybe he's holding it for, like, a top deck quick draw or something like that. Maybe he has torrential. He doesn't want to torrential his own dandy, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? Because dandy's fine getting torrentialed. And I was like, maybe he has a discard trap. So at this point, I'm like, okay, he has a discard trap for sure. So I, I know he has at least one discard trap. And I'm like, that's the only thing that makes sense. So I'm going to Alchemist, Banish the Shining Angel. Uh, if he wanted to, he could have discard trapped my Sangin or my... If it was a Phoenix Wing, he could have discard trapped one of them in response. But he decides not to do that. So I attack. He goes Mirror Force. And I'm like, beautiful. I get my plus one. Sangin can search me Herald of Orange uh, or Grand Mole. I decide to search for Grand Mole because I have Christia already. <laughs> so Grand Mole versus this deck... Uh, when we both have no monsters in play, I can just keep bouncing his monster over and over again until I end phase discard up to Christia. 
So that's kind of my game plan here, is just bounce his monster over and over again until I can stick my Christia. I still do know he has that discard trap, and I think Grammel is going to be more forcing on the discard trap than um, anything else. So yeah, that's why I search it. I set my back row, I pass. He goes activate quick draw off the top, pitch dandelion. Making this play into back row is very committal. I don't know if I like uh, going for this two for one into most back rows. He's going to synchro into drill warrior, uh, and that's going to just happen. He's going to go ahead and pitch, banish, pitch the last shell, and pass the turn. Not attacking this time, playing around deepers, and we draw Starlight Road. I've got Grammel, I've got Solemn Judgment. Um, i got a lot of stuff I can do here. I'm just going to summon Shining Angel, and I'm going to attack the token. And then I'm going to set two and pass. And so this situation is not great for me, but eventually I can set up a board where I have two monsters, and I can double sack for Christia with like Starlight Road back up. And I think I have Solemn Judgment as well at this point. So I can Solemn the discard trap, and then double sack for Christia, and then... Um, lock out his drill he's going to get two tokens here he's going to set a new background pass i could have end phased my call of the haunted there but i decided he could have multiple discard traps here and he only has one card in hand so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to call of the haunted target sangin and this is going to bait his discard trap he's going to go regeki break pitch caius i'm going to solemn that he checks his back row I don't know what was in his back row at this point, but if he had another actionable back row, now would have been the time to do it, to, to um, get rid of the potential for us to double sack for Christia, basically. So we go battle phase, we attack with Sangin, we attack with Shining Angel. He told me later that one of his back row was Dust Tornado. I can't see it here, but me being able to grab Sangin disincentivizes him for from Dust Tornadoing the Call of the Haunted because it just gives us a free plus one. So he's like, I don't want a Dust Tornado that call. You know what I mean? So he should have led on maybe the Dust Tornado and kept the uh, Regeki Break for later uh, if he did have Dust Tornado. But here we double sack uh, for Christia, Sang in effect, and that's going to search Herald of Orange. And Herald of Orange is going to negate any Raikou that's going to be able to stop this Christia. And we have Grand Mole. So we have Grand Mole, Christia lock. And yeah, he passes a turn. Here, I just summon Warrior Lady, I believe. Uh, Mirror Force is gone, so I'm just going to attack with the Warrior Lady for 15. And then I decide to attack with Christia too, and he actually just lets it through, and I'm like, okay, well shit. I was thinking if he has, you know, if he has uh, a way to remove Christia, let's say he has a D prison, he's down to two cards. I've got Grammel, I've got Live Herald, I've got Gores, I've got like Starlight Road still set. I pass the turn, I've got an active Warrior Lady pressuring him. I should be able to close this game out if he has a D prison. He goes Legacy of Yada, he draws a new card. Um, He sets back row, sets a monster, passes, but he knows about that Grammel. Grammel's coming. Here comes Torrential. There's Starlight Road. And that's going to wrap up this game. Pretty much. Let's see. Did he have Dust Tornado? I couldn't really tell. We didn't really get a good chance to look at that back row. Going into game two. Uh, yeah, I sighted in the Oppression. I sighted in some number of the Breakers, the Compulsory. I think I sighted in like 13 cards. Like straight up. I don't really remember exactly how it goes down, but yeah, we're going to skip through this part. I should have shown the camera what I was sighting. That would have been better. For future reference, of course. Um, yeah, so looking at my hand, it's pretty good. He has Titanial. I'm like, okay, that card's pretty good too. He doesn't set any back row and he passes. I'm like, he probably has Heavy Storm or a way to remove back row. So I look at my hand. I've got Mirror Force. I've got Call of the Haunted. I've got Sangin. I've got Breaker and I've got Honest. And here's an important opportunity to take a read on your opponent. Because he went Titanial and he didn't set any other cards, he didn't play any other cards, his hand is either one of two things. It's a shitload of normal summons, or he's got Heavy Storm, Space Typhoon, a way to remove back row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set Sangin, and I'm actually going to set Return, because I want to bait him to use his Heavy Storm, and then get him with the Mirror Force after he's spent his Heavy Storm, basically. I do have ways to um, clear the Titanial, in Sangin search for DD Warrior Lady, and I have Honest as well. So even if I lose the Mirror Force, it's not that bad, but I'd prefer not to lose the Mirror Force if possible. So I'm going to set the return. It's the worst card in my hand by far. It's completely dead with my hand, except for if I do end up going for that DD Warrior Lady off Sangin line. He draws for turn. He goes ahead. He pitches Volcanic Shell Special Quick Draw. I'm like, okay. He can make Drill Warrior now, which is bad for me. Because Drill Warrior means he can just attack me directly. Switch the Titanial to defense, you know. Start getting really drill with it. 
uh, which is very bad for me. But he makes an even more aggressive play here. He sacks the quick draw for Caius the Shadow Monarch. And then instead of targeting our monster, he decides to target the back row to play around Mirror Force. Which, to be fair, we did have Mirror Force. But we saw ahead a couple turns. I'm like, he didn't set any back row. There's a chance he could have Heavy Storm, or he could be setting up a way to clear my back row and attack me. So let's just let's just get this sorted. And you see the mirror force in my hand. I shuffled it to the front so the camera could see it <laughs> to show that I'm the GOAT, basically. He attacks the Sangin, we get DD Warrior Lady, and he attacks me for 28. Now, there's a couple of different plays here, but I think the safest and the best play, because we've taken so much damage, is to summon DD Warrior Lady. He doesn't or he does pay 500 once, search for the shell. Because I have taken so much damage already, I think the best play here is to summon DD Warrior Lady, attack using Honest to clear the Titanial immediately. Um, this also will allow me to get like my other stuff online. I've drawn Starlight Road, so I'm pretty safe setting all of my cards now into still a potential Heavy Storm. So yeah, we use Honest to clear that. DD Warrior Lady can trade with the Caius, and then we'll have Mirror Force. We'll have everything else laid out for us. He draws for turn. Now, I thought for a really long time here about this attack, because he does attack me. I thought about using my Mirror Force now, but I didn't want to... I don't know. I figured he had another shell in hand, because he was not activating his shell first. So, like, I figured he had a second shell, because I feel like you just activate the shell first, no matter what, so you don't forget. You know what I mean? But he could be waiting. Uh, it's probably optimal to wait, um, but for some reason I had to read that he had a second shell in hand. And I was like, if he has two shells, he has, like, four real cards... He might try to convert those shells into a synchro, and then he'll attack me at some point. Um, so I'm thinking the Mirror Force will be good later to clear Drill Warrior, which is something that DD Warrior Lady can't do. So I was thinking, okay, because he has these shells, right? And because he has maybe another quick draw, because he didn't decide to go for Drill last turn, potentially this will be better. I don't know. Anyway, here comes Breaker, and this is why Breaker's so crazy. You just get free pluses. I go Breaker, pop the back row. He thinks for a very long time. He chains Regeki Break. He targets the back row. He hits my Mirror Force, actually. And I'm like, oh, darn, that's crazy. I check how many cards he has in hand. He has three. I go ahead and call. Target Sangin. Sangin attack. Breaker attack. I uh, deal 2,600 damage. I figured next turn, I'm going to call the Sangin anyway. So I might as well do it now and get that extra 1,000 points of damage. So, yeah, that's why I did it. And I was thinking, based off his body language, based off the way he had his hand set down on the table... He didn't actually have gores, and that's why that bluff is so effective, you know what I mean? Because when I set my hand down on the table, people think you don't have gores, and they just play into it. But usually, when a player doesn't have gores, they just set their hand down anyway. So it's like, um, I attack with the Sangin for a thousand, I checked for the gores, he just like didn't even like consider saying that he didn't have any effects or whatever, and then I attacked with the Breaker, and I'm like, okay, yeah, this is a free 2600. Next turn, I can double sack for Christia, I can search Grand Mole, and then I have Mole Christia, and it's like exactly where you want to be, basically. Here comes Debris Dragon. Debris is going to bring out the Lone Fire. He's going to Synchro here. Now, if he does make Black Rose Dragon and just attacks my Breaker, I am an idiot and I've lost this game. But he decides to make Black Rose Dragon and blow up the field, and I have Starlight Road set, so... Tough. Actually tough. Next turn, or next phase, he's forced to trade the Smashing with the Stardust that we got for free. He passes a turn. On our turn, we just draw for turn. It's Gore's. Funny enough, both times we had Gores versus him, we had a dead call. Most of the time that happened in this tournament, I would draw Gores after call was dead, but it's still fine. We just double sack for Christia. Search. We can grab Alchemist, we can grab Mole. I decided to just grab Mole in case he has Reiko. He has two cards in hand, hit for 28, he draws for turn, and uh, that's going to be the game. So, yeah, I ended the tournament at 4-2. I ended up bubbling. I got, like... um. I think I was like ninth place or something like that, which is fine. I lost early, so I didn't really deserve to top this one. And uh, I had a lot of good matches. I hope you guys learned something from all this. It was kind of a lot. Narrating live matches is it's harder than narrating dueling book matches because like on dueling book matches, you can see your hand, but I'll get better at it with more practice. Once again, check out Forrest Ent. A uh, huge, huge shout out to him for uh, uploading and posting these videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.